All right, we are going to go ahead and get started here. Um, again, um, today will be a Ring Central administrator training focused on user creation and options available for setting up your users in Ring Central. And I will be taking you through this training today. My name is Tom Lyons. I'm a senior engineer with Inflow Communication. Um, I am also the MyTel subject matter expert, um, and I have almost seven years um, coming up in January of unified communications experience on the MyTel, Ring Central, and Genesis Club platforms. A little bit about Inflow Communications before we get started today. Inflow does have a sole focus on unified communications and contact center solutions. What that means is we don't branch into any other facet of technology in your environment, such as networking equipment. We focus solely on the voice infrastructure. As a result, when you give us a call, you're going to be connected directly with a support engineer that's very well versed in the platform that you use and will be able to assist you. We are a Mitel Platinum partner, a Genesis Gold partner, and also partnered with Ring Central. And we currently have offices and employees across the United States. We service over 200,000 endpoints and over 800 customers nationwide and in many cases worldwide. And we are maniacal about the customer experience. We want to make sure you get all the information you need and then some for your voice environment to make sure everything is working the way that you need it to. We do have a few webinars coming down the pipe that you may be interested in. Um, so to go over a few of the upcoming ones here, um, we do have kind of a running theme with Microsoft Teams this month. So if you're looking at Microsoft Teams, some of these may um, be very, very beneficial to you. On the 14th, so tomorrow, we actually have a webinar about Microsoft Teams and Cloud PBX. So if you're using a platform like Ring Central and you are interested in learning what you can do with Microsoft Teams as well, this may be a good webinar for you. On the 20th, we will have a webinar on voice analytics and the customer experience. So how to use those analytics to make sure that you are directly impacting the way that your business handles those calls and provides better satisfaction to your customers. And on the 21st, we have a webinar on Microsoft Teams and Contact Center. So another Microsoft Teams flavored webinar that will give you some information as to what you can do with Teams in relation to your Contact Center products. Here's a brief snippet of some of the customers that we support. And as always, if you have any questions, there is a questions box in the GoToWebinar application that you can use. I do wait until the end of the webinar to answer any questions. And if anything does come up that I cannot answer directly right away, I will find the information out and send you an email. And so with that, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it here. So I will go ahead and make this full screen to make it a little bit easier to see. And what we are looking at right now is the main admin portal for Ring Central. I'm going to go over what we're looking at here real quick, and then we're actually going to jump right into users. This will be part of a series of videos that we will do about Ring, Ring Central admin training. This is going to be the main page that you will see when you first log into your admin portal. You'll notice that there's a few buttons um, at the very top, then a few tutorials to show you what you can do in the system. Ring Central is set up in such a way that, it's, that it makes it a lot easier than most systems to figure out exactly what you want to do and navigate there. So to go through what we're looking at here, um, these four buttons here are going to be a lot of main information for your system, um, such as your business hours. This is actually the business hours that the auto receptionist, which is the main the main receptionist or IVR that is used for calls that are coming into the system, that will edit the hours that those, those are in use. You can also edit the call handling and greetings from here. Set your caller ID for outbound calls. And also publish your company info for directory assistance. So there's some very quick uh, at your fingertips buttons when you first start up the system. Underneath there, there's some, some tutorials for setting up um, things that you may need in the system, such as using call queues, setting up notifications for calls, voicemails, and faxes. So you can set up like email notifications for voicemails and things of that nature. Change your company voicemail, call forwarding, and change with callers here. So that would be your hold music. So you, you do have tutorials here as well. And any of these buttons will bring you to the page associated for these. So for example, if I click on edit business hours, it's going to bring me to that, uh, that particular piece in the auto receptionist. We're not going to spend time on this today because we're actually going to be talking about users. Um, but I just wanted to show you what that home page is looking, looking like for you. So when you're on this home page up at the top, you also have a number of different columns that you can choose from. 
Um, the one that we're going to focus on today is users. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And what we're going to go through today is we're going to go through how to create a new user, how to make sure you're using the existing phone that you have, um, or set this user up for soft phone, um, as well as purchasable, purchasable options that are set up in the system for this. And then we are also going to go over user configure, configurable settings so that you can set up the user exactly the way they need to be. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the users box here. And when I do this, it's going to open a user list. And you'll notice on the left side, there's a few different options. There's users with extensions. There's also unassigned extensions. Um, unassigned extensions is going to be for users that don't actually have a phone. Um, they're built in the system, but they don't have a way that you can directly contact them. Um, users with extensions are typically going to be where you are. And you'll see here that we actually have, in our demo environment, we have three users. Um, so we have the Enflow Admin, Engineering, and Sales. You'll notice that they are extensions 101, 103, and 102, respectively. And they also have direct numbers assigned to them. You can also see their roles, which is important for setting them up in the system the way that they need to be for permissions. That will be covered in a later training, but this you, you can see that these are all set up as super admins, which means that they actually have access to the back end that I am in right now. You can also see if they're part of a specific department and if they're listening to their voicemail. So you can see here that there are four of four available for the, the inflow admin. There's also a couple options here under actions. If I click on the, the three dots here, you can see I can copy and assign the user. So if I just want to create the user as a template, I can do this here. If there were more users, you could search the users box here um, to find the specific user you're looking for. And then to actually add more people to the list, you would use this add user box. Now this one can be a little confusing if you've never used it before. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. I'm gonna walk you through the process. We won't be able to go all the way through because it will um, actually incur a charge um, when you are finished creating the user because that is how Ring Central bills. They do bill per, per user with existing phone lines or per, per direct number assigned. But to go through the options, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this box. And it is going to pop up a new window here with a four-step process. Um, so you see here the four processes are selecting a location, adding users, adding shipping info if you're going to buy a phone, and then a confirmation, which is where the actual order is placed. It will give you a breakdown of how much the users will cost, um, including recurring charges as well as one-time fees, and then um, would complete the process. So for this test, I'm going to use domestic users because we are going to set it, set it up so that these users would be in the United States. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next here. And on this page here, you'll notice that there are two options. I can add users with devices, or I can add users without devices. If I click on Without Devices, you'll note that it says that adding extension without a phone is free. But it does cost $18.99 per month for any users that make and receive calls, even if they don't have a digital line. So this would be for if you set up a user in the system that is just having calls forwarded to their cell phone through the Ring Central platform, you would still have to pay for calls to those users, even though you're not using an existing Ring Central phone or a soft phone variant. So that is important to note um, that there would be a charge applied even for those. In order to go through and show you all of the options, I'm gonna go ahead and click on add users with devices. And this one is fairly easy. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the quantity. This is just the number of users. So let's say we wanted to add five users here. For the state, you would just choose the state that they are associated with. This is going to help you find a phone number for them. So if you were looking for a bank of numbers that's in the same area. So maybe even if you have users in the state of Utah, you want them to be answering calls from a California phone number, you would choose California here. Otherwise, if you just wanna have the numbers close to where these users are, then you would select where they are. So in my particular case, I'm in the state of Washington. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter Washington here and click on Washington. Then the area code dropdown becomes um, illuminated and I'm able to choose from that. And you'll notice that it's got specific area codes as well as cities. Um, this can be important for a number of states where area codes overlap through multiple counties. Um, Washington is one of those. So for example, I'm in a 360 area code, but so is Bellingham and Bellingham is five hours north of me. So what I wanna do is I wanna find a number specifically local to me, which would be Vancouver. So if I type in Vancouver here, you'll notice I have a number, a number of different options here and I will choose 360 Vancouver. And then I'm going to choose 
either new numbers, if we don't have any numbers that match that, that area code, which in this case we do not, or if you have company numbers that are available, you can choose those numbers here as well. After that, it's going to ask me to select a device. And this is where things can come in, um, where you need to make sure that you're choosing the right option. So when I click on select a device, you'll notice there's a few different options. Now we did recently buy a phone, which you can see here, there is a VVX601 um, that was bought. And you see there is a price associated um, of $399. So it does tell you how much the phone costs if you do buy it directly from Ring Central. Um, if we're looking for a new phone to buy, we would actually click on desktop phones. When we click on this, you'll note that there are a whole bunch of different models. Typically, um, for Ring Central, um, the Polycom models do work very, very well, and those are the ones that we that we will typically go with. A few of these other options in in the uh, Ring Central um, drop-down list here will have full functionality. There are other phones that um, you can use with Ring Central, but they may have only basic functionality available. So something to keep in mind, if you buy something from this page, it's something that's been tested and is supported within the Ring Central environment. So it's nice and easy to do. Um, so for example, if I wanted to set this user, these users up with a Polycom VVX250, I can see the price is $159. In this case, we're doing five users. So we'd be looking for five phones. So I could select that. If we're trying to use existing phones that you already have in your environment, you would actually select this other phones dropdown. In this other phones drop down, you'll notice that there is a button for existing phone with the price of free because we're not buying a new product. We don't need to um, actually pay anything for that, as well as the Ring Central phone app, which is going to be the WebRTC soft phone that is used with the application. This will allow you to use the application to make and receive calls using a PC headset, and that is also free because that comes with the application. You would still be charged for any direct numbers and usage, but just, just the app itself is free. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the phone app for now. When you when I do, you'll notice it says it tells you exactly what I was saying there. You can answer and place calls using your PC and the included Ring Central phone app, which you can place on your mobile phone as well. Um, and in this particular case, we'll use that for all five users. So we're going to select five free options for the, the phone app here. When I do that, it has now added it to the device. And I'm going to go ahead and hit add. When I do that, it's going to go through and at, and tell me what the current charges are. Um, in this particular case, you'll see that I have um, five users with phones, which does have a recurring charge of $44.99. So it, it will be $224.95 a month for these users. So it, it does give you a running total of everything that you're adding. And then if I hit next, it's going to start asking for shipping info. In this particular case, there is no shipping info to actually put in. All you need to do in this particular case is just click on the phone and assign a selected. If there is a shipping address, then you would add the shipping address here. You can add an attention to, and you can also choose your shipping method. And then after this, we'll give you a confirmation of the charges as well as um, what you have selected. And at that point, once you hit finish on the, conf on the confirm page, that is where the order is placed. The users will be, will be, uh, will be created and then you would be able to um, set those users up. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this because we don't want to incur a charge here, um, but they would be added here. And so this is where you would then want to go in and configure your, your users. There's a few different pieces that will need to be done. Um, in particular, if you wanna have phone numbers set up for your users, um, phone numbers would need to be built in, um, as well as making sure that their, their phones are assigned, and then also making sure that their user settings are the way that you want them to be. And that's what we're going to talk about um, for the next 15 minutes here. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on the Inflow admin. When I do, it's gonna bring up a little box that has a number of different drop-down menus. So you can see here up at the top, I have my extension as well as a, a uh, option for outbound calls and faxes, meetings and notifications. Then I also have a user details, phones and numbers, screening, greeting and hold music, call handling and forwarding and messages drop-down. These are all going to give me the configurable options for my users to make sure that I have them set up exactly the way that I want them to be. So for example, if I click on the user details drop-down, You'll notice there are two tabs for this, um, general, which is going to be your basic information about the user as well as settings and permissions. So to go through the general tab here, it is fairly self-explanatory. 
um, you get your first and na last name. That's going to be how they show up in the users tab. So you can see this is inflow admin, which goes with the inflow admin user. You also have the option to add a job title and a department to the user. Um, this will show up on the user's page as well um, so that you can find people very easily. So if I wanted to, for example, put inflow admin in operations, I could just add operations to the department here and hit save and it would show up in the user list. I can also change the extension number here, add a mobile phone if you want to have that phone as an option for um, external calls um, to get forwarded to, as well as a contact phone number. If I hover over this and, and click on the informational tab, you'll notice that it says this contact number will be used to contact you if we need to verify your identity. So this will be for things like if you're locked out of your account, need assistance logging into the system, Ring Central may give you a call on this phone number to reach out to you. You also have a email address that will be assigned to the user. And you'll notice there's a little button under it that says verify email uniqueness. The, the uh, email on the user does have to be unique to the system, so you can't have multiple users with the same email address. When you click on this button, it'll just double check your database and make sure that that email address is unique. If it's not, it won't let you save the user with that email address. So that's something to keep in mind. You can also change your password here if you want um, and even change your email settings. So if you want information on products or if a phone's added, you can get that set up as well. We, we use both of those for our admin accounts so that we can get up to date information in Ring Central and also know what's going on in our demo system. So you can see that here. You can also record your username. So you'll see here um, there is a edit button right under here. If I click on this edit button, you can either use text to speech, which will just um, say the name that you have in the greeting name box there. You can also record your name so you can actually use a PC headset or a phone or actually no you would have to use a PC headset here I apologize to um, record your name when people get to your to your mailbox. So you do have those options here. A few more settings as well though under the settings and permissions this will actually um, give you a few more options for for setting up the user and making sure they're working specifically the way that you want them to. In particular, the, the uh, roles, the user groups, and the user hours are all fairly important. So I'm gonna go ahead and click under user hours here. And under user hours, you'll note there are two different options. You can set it up for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So it's always technically um, on hours for the user or you can set custom hours, which you can see currently is set to nine to six Monday through Friday and off on Saturday and Sunday. This is going to govern if, if you are able to set up a normal on hours call routing scenario, as well as an off hours call routing scenario for your user. If you're set up for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, then there will be no off hours. And the system is actually intelligent enough to say, oh, you're actually set to 24 hours a day. So there is no off hours operation. If you wanna change this, you just need to go to the user hours and change them to custom hours. In this particular case, because we are set from nine to six, we will have the ability to set an off hours greeting. Your roles, as we noted before, is going to be how you have access to the Ring Central system. You'll notice there's no edit button on this particular user, and that's because this user, as you can see in the parentheses up on the top, this is our standard super admin for the for the uh, system. The super admin cannot be changed. This is to make sure you don't lose access to the system. If I wanted to change inflow engineering, I could. So if I click on inflow engineering here, you'll notice that the super admin role now has an edit button under it. And if I click on that, I can choose which role I wanna use. And you'll see here, there's actually a full description of the different permissions that the user can access. This will be something we'll go over in a later training, but at a glance, this should give you the information that you need, especially with the built-in roles that are in the system to make sure that people have the access that they need. Generally, you're gonna either be a phone system or super admin if you're actually working on the system and um, you, you may be a standard user if you are just taking calls. You also have user groups here. User groups are just going to be a group of users that have a manager. So you can see here, this user is part of the training group with a manager um, set to inflow admin. This simply just means the inflow admin is able to check in on these users. And so it does vary a bit from 
for example, my tall user groups, which are a much broader series of permissions if you're used to that platform at all. So these are fairly basic. In this particular case, Inflow Engineering, it, according to this user group, reports to the Inflow Admin extension. In here as well, you can also set up a confirmation message. Um, you'll notice that there is an informational blurb here as well. Um, this is basically how long in your application you will see a little pop-up that says, you know, calls been calls been completed, calls on hold. Um, it is going to default to three seconds. Um, you can actually change this as well. You can select, you can change the duration, or you can actually disable the confirmation entirely. And then other options that you'll see in here is if you have a video service such as Ring Central Meetings, you will see that option here if the user has the availability for it, as well as automatic call recording. If you're using a call recording in your system, you'll be able to see if this user is getting their calls recorded or not. So that is the user details. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that here. We're gonna talk about phones and numbers here as well. Um, this is going to actually show where, um, what options the user has currently for um, making and receiving calls. You'll notice when I click on it under numbers, it says no numbers are available, um, which makes it look like the user does not have a phone number. And there is an add direct number button here. If I click on this, just to show you the box, this is going to be very similar to the user setup. It's just going to be um, a, a little bit different because you're just choosing numbers. In this particular case, you would choose if you want a local number, a toll-free number, or a vanity number. So for example, 8559 inflow, which is our support line, um, would be a vanity number. Once you choose that option, you can choose your state. And you can choose your area code, just like we did before. And it's going to give you a list of numbers that you can choose from. Now, these will incur costs because they will be numbers that will be added to your system. And this would add a, a direct number to the user. But just to show you what that looks like here, that would be after this, you would confirm the order. It would give you a printout, and then it would go through the process of creating those numbers for you. There's also a bunch of other options here, though. We have phones and conference. And if I click on phones, You'll notice that there is a phone called the Inflow Engineering Soft Phone. The phone type is the Ring Central phone. And we do have a number here of 971-238-5059. So don't be misled, even though there's no direct number on the user, there is a number associated with their phone, which means when they get a call to that number, if they're signed into their Ring Central phone app, that, that call will route to them. So this is typically how you're going to see phone, uh, phone numbers assigned is to the application for the user rather than direct to the user. There is an edit button here. So if I click on this, you'll notice that I just have the name of the PC that's using the phone app. I have the name. I can change the data usage. And I also have an emergency address. So I can see that information here. In here, if I wanted to add a phone, I could click this button. It's gonna ask me to select devices, any numbers and shipping info, just like if I were adding a user and, and creating a phone with them um, on the users page. And you also have the option to change your presence. To show you that here, this is going to be the presence in the HUD um, part of the Ring Central application, as well as any physical phone. And these are essentially extension monitor buttons. So you can see here the top two buttons for this user are set to inflow engineering. This is to make sure that you have at least two line appearances available for calls. And then there are um, buttons dedicated for inflow sales and inflow admin. These buttons would actually monitor to see if these extensions become in use or start getting calls. And you can actually, if delegation is set up, you can use these buttons to pick those calls up as well. So you can see here, there's an enable me to pick up monitored line on hold. So if a call is on hold for um, one of those users for it, for example, Inflow Admin, I can pick up that call. Um, and if I wanted to ring my phone when any of these monitored users are getting a phone call, I can set that up as well. So you do have that capability. Under permissions, I can turn off, um, on or off, whether or not other users can see my present status. And I can also choose who is available and allowed to answer my phone calls. So in this particular case, Inflow Admin and Inflow Sales are both allowed to answer the calls for Inflow Engineering. 
And then real quickly here, because we are running out of time, uh, what we are going to go over real quick as well is our call handling and forwarding, because that's going to be the main piece here. We will go over screening, greeting, and hold music and messages in a later training. This will be part of the series, as I noted before. Um, in call handling and forwarding, this is where you actually set up how phone calls make it to the user. And so there are a few different things you can set up here. You'll notice that um, there is a um, series of options down below that will allow you to um, set up the user the way that you want for their call flow operation. Um, and you can set up how these calls flow um, and how long they go for. So for example here, if I wanted this user to simultaneously ring a couple of different devices. I could change that drop down from sequentially to simultaneously. And then in the options down below, I could turn on the desktop and mobile app, which is currently set for three rings or 15 seconds. And you'll notice we also have a mobile number here and it's set for four rings or 20 seconds. So what this tells you is when a call comes in for this user, it'll actually try to ring the desktop client um, three times, which is approximately 15 seconds. That's how long the ring back is. Um, and it will also at the same time reach out and try to contact that mobile phone and ring it four times. If I wanted to add another phone for this, I could. All I have to do would, would be to add a phone number into the um, box here and then I could turn this on or off. This slider to the right is active and to the left like this is disabled. So you can see that here. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel there. And we will go back to call handling and forwarding real quick just so we can take a look at a couple other things here. Um, if I click on add call forwarding phone, it's just gonna add another line to the bottom there. So if I wanted to add a whole bunch of phones, I can do it that way. I also have the ability to forward to others phones here in the dots. So if I click on that, I can actually choose a particular user and set them up to, to get the calls that are forwarded as well. This is for normal hours. If I click on after hours, um, you'll note that there are a few different options you can do. Um, you can send callers directly to your voicemail, which will just play your voicemail greeting. You can play an announcement and disconnect if you don't want somebody to leave you a voicemail. You can forward calls, which if I choose forward calls, it, you'll notice that it gives me the option just like before to um, either ring my phones or send it elsewhere. And I can also set up on conditional forwarding, which would be just, um, just allowing you to send calls directly to a specific number rather than trying to go through call routing. So you can do that with after hours as well. Remember from the beginning, if you were set to 24 hours a day, seven days a week for your call operations, if you click on after hours here, instead of these options, you're actually gonna see a little blurb that says, you can't actually set up these options because the user is set for 24 hour operation. If you wanna change this, then you can go ahead and go into the user, the user hours and change them to a custom mode. You also have some settings that you can look at for displayed incoming caller ID. If I click on this, I can see what is shown for me. Um, you, can see, you can see either the incoming caller ID, which is default, or the called number. Um, and you also have a couple options to display your main ring central number if the number calling is blocked. Um, and you can either show it on non-ring central phones only, um, meaning that um, just the normal information will come through, so the caller ID and, and name would come through normally on your application, or you can send it on all phones as well. And so with that, that does wrap up our time for today. Um, this was a quick intro to users. Um, we will have a series on this, including call flow, the auto receptionist, and group setup. Um, but for the time being, if you have any questions on user setup, uh, and what I went over today, please let me know. I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys just a moment here to see if any questions do come through.
All right, it looks like we don't have any current questions. If anything comes to your head after the webinar, that's okay. You can always reach out to us. In fact, here is our information for customer resources. Um, if you are a current Inflow customer and you need to get in touch with us for any support related reason, you can send us an email at support at inflowcommunications.com. These emails are answered in the order they are received. So if you do have an urgent issue, definitely give us a call. Um, however, we do have a pretty good response time on those emails. You can also use our support portal at support.inflowcommunications.com, which will allow you to take a look at all of the tickets that you have created with Inflow. Um, you, can, you can actually change the status. You can update um, the ticket from that portal as well. And if you're the main contact for your system, we can even set it up so that you can see all the tickets that your organization has opened, even if it wasn't from you. If you want to give us a call, um, you can reach us at 855-946-3569 or 855-9-INFLOW. We do have a three ring answer policy, so you're not going to be on hold for 15 to 20 minutes waiting for a representative. And when you do get in touch with a representative, you're going to be talking directly to a support engineer who is well versed in your voice environment. For information on Inflow support packages, you can send us an email at sales at inflowcommunications.com to see what options we have available for you. Or you can reach us on phone as well at 844-446-3569. Again, on behalf of Inflow Communications, my name is Tom. Thank you so much for joining us for our webinar today. Um, we do hope to see you in the future for um, more of our webinars that we have coming down the pipe. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks, everyone.